hello there welcome to my channel okay in this video i'm going to present to you physics paper 4 october november 2020 0625 and is 43 duration for this uh, paper is of uh, one hour and 50 minutes okay let us look at the first question okay number one a Figure 1.1 shows a trolley travel down a ramp. Okay, here's the tape, trolley and ramp. And this is the angle. Okay, the trolley has a piece of paper tape attached to it. The paper passes through a machine which makes a dot on a tape every 0.02 second. Okay, this is a ticker tape timer. Okay, and then let us look at uh, this part. Okay, figure 1.2 shows a section of a tape. State how the dot on the tape shows that the trolley was moving with a constant speed. Okay, now let me, let me explain to you a little bit of a ticker tape timer over here. Okay, then. For ticker tape timer, the machine vibrates at 50 hertz. Okay, 50 hertz in one second. So it means that it is vibrating. It is vibrating at 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, so it means that it means that for one second, you'll be having a 50 dots. Okay, 50 dots. So no matter the dot is like nearby or is a far apart okay but the distance the time here from one dot to another dot remains the same which is 0 0.02 seconds and here is also 0 0.02 seconds the only one the only one thing that matter is the distance between this okay the distance between these two dots, which is called as a one tick. Okay, now let us do some example over here. Okay, over here. Now, uh, the first one, A, and the second one is the B. Okay, the first one, if you look at it, the distance here is the 9 centimeter, And we have a three ticks, 1, 2, and 3. So, to calculate the speed, we have the formula distance over the time. Okay, distance over the time. So, now the distance is a 9 cm and the time is given by 0 0.02 multiplied with the 3 over here. So, here we are, we are having 9 over 0 0.06. So, which will give you... Let me calculate this. You'll be getting here about 150 centimeter per second. Okay, now let us do the B. 9 centimeter over 0 0.02 because it has only uh, one tick. Okay, so when I change this one, 9 divided by 0 0.02, you'll be having a 450 centimeter per second okay so these are the speed differences the more uh, further the distance between the dots the higher speed it is okay now let us look at another example okay let's say we have a this type of tick and there is an arrow over here so when there is an arrow it means this is the direction Okay, direction of the movement of this ticker tape timer. So it means that the first the first tick here it represents the u, the initial velocity. And the last one, the last tick over here, it represents the v, which uh, which represents the final velocity. So what happened over here is we can find the we can find the acceleration like from here to here we have to find the time so the acceleration is given by the formula v minus u over the time 
this is your acceleration okay so in this direction uh, it is going in a constant uh, acceleration for this okay now let us go back to the question okay now state how the dot on the tape shows the trolley was moving with a constant speed so they do have a uh, the dots the dots are equally equally uh, spaced because if you look at this distance and the distance over here is about the same okay so it shows here they are moving in a constant velocity now let us look at the next one when the trolley reaches the point p where is point p point p is over here at this part okay now the ramp tilted so that the angle x is much more greater okay describe and explain the change in motion of the trolley so when the angle x is much more greater is much more steeper the gradient right so the description here will be uh, the trolley has a you can mention increase in speed okay it accelerates it accelerates or you can also say increase in speed because because when uh, when the when the angle x is much more greater so what happened the force the resultant force is much more heavier compared to the friction so that is the explanation for this so you can also place this over here a bigger resultant force resultant force uh, acting on the trolley okay this is a two marks over here now let us move to the next question okay another trolley is released from the top of the ramp 1.3 shows a speed time graph for this trolley okay using figure 1.3 calculate the distance traveled by the trolley in the first 0 0.5 seconds first 0 0.5 seconds so we have to make it bigger okay, 0 0.5 seconds so okay i think it's enough okay now 0 0.5 seconds let us look at this so here we will be getting here 0 0.5 it should be here this part the line is too thick okay so i think it's here this line and it is going in this line the red color one all right so here will be 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 so it's correct so here is 0 0.75 so the speed uh, is uh, 0. 7, 5 and the time taken here is a 0 0.5 seconds okay now let, let, let us go back to the normal mode okay so over here so we can use the same formula speed equals the distance over the time the speed is 0 0.75 the time is 0 0.5 so what are the distance so we have to multiply this so we are getting about uh, distance equals to 7.5 times with a 0 0.5 so here will be here you'll be having 0 0.5 okay here is a 0 0.375 and then please remember when they are asking for the distance for this uh, uh, speed time graph right for the speed 
time graph, it always must be the area. So, here they are asking for the area of this triangle. So, which means it should be 1 over the area, or the area of the triangle, 1 over 2 times the speed times the, the time, right? So, we have to divide it by 2. And we will be getting here 0 0.19. Okay, 0 0.19 meter. So, this is the answer for this question. So, it's 2 marks given here. Okay, now let us move to the next one. Okay, for C. Figure 1.4 shows a metal ball at rest in a tube of liquid. This is the metal ball. This is the X uh, liquid. Okay, the ball is released and reaches terminal velocity at the point X. Okay, here is terminal velocity. Explain the motion of the ball as it falls from rest until it reaches point X. Use the idea of force and acceleration in your answer. Okay, and the marks given here is uh, 3 marks. Okay, so, okay, in this picture, I'm going to explain to you in uh, 3 different parts. Where the first one, number 1, and here is number 2, and at X is here number 3. Okay, so let me explain to you this part in terms of the force. Okay, now, let us look at uh, 1, 2, 3. Okay, at number 1 here, when it is released from the rest, okay, so what happened here is the weight, the weight force is fresh and the resultant, the resistance here, the resistance of the water here is equals to 0. So, which means you have the, the weight force. So, uh, here it will begin to accelerate. Right? Okay, it begins to accelerate. It begins to accelerate where you have an increasing speed. Okay, when it comes to a second point, what happens here is the resistance begin to build up. Okay, here they begin to build up. And we have a value over here. So, what happens? The force is still remains the same. So, now according to this formula, F equals to MA, the W, the weight force, will be minusing with the, the resistance, the build up uh, resistance. So, here we can notice that the the acceleration reduces and the speed is also reducing okay because the the decreasing resultant force over here all right so when you look at the point x it will come to a point where the r value and the w value here is equals to each another it means they do not have no acceleration they do not have acceleration okay so when there is no acceleration they are moving with a constant constant velocity which means it's a terminal velocity okay so all this i'll be explaining uh, point by point in the following question okay this is my suggested answer here okay initially the metal ball accelerates due to downward force okay as the metal ball going down the resistance building up and the resultant force decreases at point x the resistance equals to the weight force hence there is no resultant force and the metal ball going in a constant speed or we can see it's a terminal speed okay so i hope you can understand uh, my explanation over here and this is for the question one total marks for the question one is a uh, eight marks okay 
Now we continue with the question number two. Okay, now we go to question number number two. Okay, figure two point one shows a cliff edge with the water below it. Okay, so now a ball fall over the edge of the cliff. The mass of the ball is hundred sixty gram. So we just write it down here. Mass is a hundred sixty gram. Height of the cliff is a one one five. Okay, we make it as a S. The distance one one five. Okay, and then what are they asking for? Okay, so here we have a calculate the vertical speed of the ball as it hits the water. Okay, as the ball here, and they are asking the speed of the ball just before it hits the water. So it means that. The u over here, the u is zero. Okay, the u is zero, and uh, final velocity we are about to find out, and there is no information about the time, and we have uh, acceleration which is uh, following the gravitation acceleration which is ten meter per second square. Okay, now by we have uh, four formulas for the linear motion. Please remember, linear motion. We have four formulas. Formula number one is a uh, v equals to u plus a t square. Final velocity, initial velocity, and this is a uh, acceleration and time square. This one you can derive from this. From this formula, formula of your acceleration. Okay, now we move on with the next one. Formula number two here is given by distance or displacement, initial time plus with a one over two acceleration multiply with a time square. Number three here we have uh, distance or dis uh, displacement. 1 over 2 v minus u multiply with time okay the last one here we have number 4 v square my equals to u square plus 2 a s okay so if you notice that uh, the formula for number 1 2 3 they do has time okay they do have time and uh, since we are not using time over here so we can opt for the the last formula okay now let us do the calculation over here so v equals to v equals to u square <coughs> v square equals to u square plus with a 2 a s okay we, we need to find the vertical speed which is a uh, v here 0 to the a is 10 given is 10 and the accelerate uh, the distance is 115 okay 115 so we are getting here about about 2300 so we square root this square root the 2300 you see how much we are getting so we are getting there about 47.96 meter per second so you can simplify it as a 48 48 meter per second okay so this is the answer for the first one okay next okay calculate the vertical momentum of the ball as it hits the water so momentum when you look at the momentum here it refers to m v so the mass is given by you scroll up where mass is given by 160 gram 
Okay, mass is about 160 gram and your velocity is about 48. And we are about to get here and both of this multiply. So we are getting here about 7, 6, 8, 80. Okay, this one is a... Uh, remember, always remember this one must be a, must be in kg. Okay, must be in kg. So we can change this into uh, 0 0.16. And here is 48. So we cannot use this. And we are getting here about 7.68 kg meter per second. Okay, so this is your answer for number 2. Okay, I hope you can understand this. Now we move on with the next question. Okay, for number 3, speed is a scalar quantity state one other scalar quantity you can name it as um, time temperature distance or energy okay velocity is a vector quantity state one other vector quantity you can also mention uh, acceleration force okay so it's one mark one mark given here now let us look at the next one next question okay here B. Uh, figure 3.1 shows a model car traveling at a constant speed on a flat circular track. Okay, flat circular track. Uh, speed of the car is 0 0.3. So, these are the speed of the car. 0 0.3 in this direction. Okay, uh, in one complete... Uh, revolution around the track the car travels 3.9 meter 3.9 meter okay now okay little bit uh, facts about this uh, circular uh, circular motions is that uh, let's say even though they are traveling in a constant speed in a circular motion okay now example the car is over here and they are traveling at the same speed example but the speed 1 and speed 2 is totally different and there is a time okay which gives us the circular acceleration okay all right now here at this part calculate the time taken for the car to complete one revolution around the track the time taken now we have a speed distance over time so the speed is 0 0.3 and the time the distance here is the 3.9 and the time so time we can move to opposite so it's a 3 over 9 divided by the 0 0.3 so the time taken here will be will be 13 seconds Okay, will be a 13 seconds. Okay, now let us move to the next question. Okay, number 2. On figure 3.1, draw and label with the letter F and arrow to show the resultant force acting on the car. Okay, resultant force that acting on the car here is... Okay, it will be going toward the center. Okay, going toward the center. This is because as a centripetal force. This is the force. That's why if you look like uh, uh, in a motorbike race, in the circle, they will be leaning toward the center. Okay, leaning toward the center. Okay, now... Okay, this is done. So, one mark over here. Okay. The speed of the car increases 
at point P uh, on a figure 3.2, the car does not stay on the track. Okay, car does not stay on the track. Now, suggest in a term of force acting on the car, why does the car does not stay on the track? Because in a circular motion, the centripetal force is the one holding the object, okay, holding the object toward the center, but with a certain limitation. It is there is over speed happening, uh, there will be the, the linear force will be higher than the circular force, the holding force. So, it causes, it causes, it causes the resultant force does not, uh, is a insufficient to hold the car. So, that's why the car does not stay on the track. Okay, so, I'll write down my suggested answer over here. Okay, so my answer here is the resultant force were insufficient to hold the car on track. Okay, so this is the answer for the one mark. Now let us move on with the next one. Okay, on figure 3.2, draw and label an arrow with the letter S to show the direction of the motion of the car as it leaves the track at point P. So, as it leaves the track at point P, so what you can do over here is, uh, here you can have the direction perpendicular, it's like a tangent. You can draw a straight line from here, all right. Okay, so here we have an arrow S. Okay, so this is the answer for this. The same like uh, we attach a rubber with an uh, eraser or any object, and we have like a uh, we oscillate it with a with a circular motion. Once it trip. The object will go in a tangent mode. Okay, so uh, I hope you can understand this. So this is the question two and three. Okay, now let us move on with the question number four. Okay, for number four, in a figure four point one, the circles represent the molecules in a different uh, state of matter. A, B, and C. So. A, identify the state A, B, C. So, the A, which is a less denser, is a liquid. And B is a, is more like, you know, uh, properly arranged, so it's a solid. And C, here is a gas. Okay, this is a two marks over here. Okay, now let us move on with the next one. B. Okay, uh, in terms, okay, okay, explain in terms of force between molecules, why gases expand more than liquid when they have the same rise in temperature, assume the pressure remains constant. Okay, first thing is the distance between a gas molecules is further apart. And now uh, one more thing here is uh, the, uh, in gas molecule, the, the forces between them, okay, the forces between them is much more weaker compared to the liquid. So that's why the gas molecule can actually expand much more further compared to liquid. Okay, now let me write down the answers over here. Okay, these are the points that I've explained to you just now. So first thing is the very large distance between a gas molecules compared to the liquid. And uh, they have a very weak forces between the gas molecules, which, which makes them to, to spread apart. Okay, so this is two marks over here. Now let us move to the C. Okay, so here, um, case okay. figure four point two shows a cylinder uh, and a piston. Okay, the gas, the volume of gas is uh, three thousand four hundred centimeter cube, 
and the pressure of the gas cylinder is 0 0.9 multiplied 10 to the power of 5 okay over here uh, this is okay now let me explain to you about the Boyle's law this is Boyle's law Boyle's law refers the pressure inversely proportional with the volume okay when the pressure increases the volume will grow uh, smaller when the pressure getting lesser the volume will increase so these are the Boyle's law so when you are comparing like a two situations you have a p1 v1 equals to p2 v2 okay now let us look at the question okay these are the question the piston is moved to the left left and fixed in a new position move to the left means it is being here okay is uh, increasing the the pressure while the volume is getting smaller so the pressure of the gas in the cylinder increases to 2.5 okay previously 0 0.9 okay assume the temperature of the gas does not change calculate the new volume of gas so we can use this formula uh, p1 v1 this is for the first situation and p2 v2 this is for the second situation okay so the pressure for the first one is is 0 0.9 multiply with 10 to power of 5 we take this one and this one 3400 okay so we apply it over here and it become so let me write it down first 0 0.9 times 10 to power of 5 and then the volume is a 3400 okay and then equals to the pressure pressure here is about 2.5 times 10 to power of 5 and then they ask us to calculate the new volume okay so um, okay so let me make it much more smaller or maybe bigger okay Okay, now let us do the calculation over here this part multiply 3000 okay so here i'll be getting 3000 no no 3.06 times 10 to power of 8 and then divide it with uh, this one which is a 2.5 multiply 10 to the power of 5 this is your volume so the second volume here gives the answer the answer here is uh, based on the calculation so 1 2 2 4 centimeter cube so th this is the answer okay this is the answer for this question three marks okay now the next one number three the gas in the cylinder is now heated the piston remains fixed in the same position as the c1 okay uh, any change in the pressure of the gas you yeah, obviously when okay la, let's say the small explanation over here okay this is the closed structure where you have the molecules bombarding the wall okay when you increase the temperature over here what happens the pressure will increase pressure will increase so what is the pressure stated here the pressure here it means the rate of the molecule bombarding the wall okay so the explanation can be included as uh, the molecules molecules of gases will move faster will move faster and the rate the rate of collision collision between between the atoms or the molecules and 
the wall of the container the wall of container it will increase okay so this is the explanation of how the pressure will increase so it's about three marks over here and total marks for this question is a 10 marks okay now let us look at the next question okay for number five Figure 5.1 shows two metal plates A and B with the radiant heat placed midway between them. Okay, here's a shiny plate and here's a dull black plate. So normally uh, the dull black plate will absorb much more heat compared to shiny plate because they will be reflecting most of the heat. So here there's a cook and it's attached with the wax over here okay so let us go through the questions so the metal plate is shiny metal b is a dull black okay a piece of chalk is uh, attached to each of the plate using wax the wax is a solid at room temperature and has a melting point of 37. still explain what happened to the piece of chalk uh, a few minutes after heater is switched on so so the basic uh, knowledge that we have here the black plate will absorb heat okay it will absorb heat and they do get hot but the most of the heat energy they will be reflected so what happens here is the wax at the plate b it will be melting at a faster rate compared to the plat a so what happened when the wax get melt the chalk will fall off so the chalk at the plat b will fall much more faster compared to plat a so that is the basic explanation so i will note down my points all here okay so these are the answer okay now state and explain what happened to the piece of chalk in a few minutes after the heater switched on okay black surface this is four marks so black uh, black surface are better heat absorber compared to uh, shiny surface this is one so that the black surface gets hot faster compared to shiny plate okay two wax at uh, at plate b will be melting at the faster rate compared to the wax at the plat this one should be plat a okay so what happened here is a chalk at the plat b will fall off first before the chalk at the uh, chalk on the shiny plate okay so this is my answer suggestion and sorry for the bad hand handwriting i have here okay now we go to the b okay state the name of uh, of the method of transfer of a thermal energy in a solid metal in solid metal we will have a conduction remember uh, heat transfer here we have a uh, three so let me scroll down here it's just a rough explanation so method of conduction we have a method of a transfer we have a conduction we do have a convection and lastly we have a radiation okay the radiation is a uh, you do not need any medium it's like a uh, between a sun and earth is vacuum right okay so this is a radiation so this is the fastest okay this is the fastest the heat can be reached at a certain place conduction is the slowest where it where it has to go through atom by atom and conduction is uh, by solid and convection uh, the convection is by fluid fluid is either uh, it can be liquid or it can be air is something like a uh, air example like uh, in, in our aircon room okay it's a convection liquid is like how's the water is getting boiled okay so this is a convection okay guys so this is the question number five total marks here is a uh, five question it's a short question so now let us move to the next question here number six okay now for number six a sound wave consists of a 
compression and also refraction. Okay, explain the terms compression and refraction. Give your explanation in terms of the spacing of the molecules and the pressure for the sound wave in air. Okay, for this question, let me explain to you in, a, in the form of pictures. Okay, here is my simple drawing here. Okay, now uh, there is a two types of uh, illustration that will be used by a textbook uh, school teachers. Okay, so one is uh, they'll be using a silky spring over here. So uh, it represents the atoms, uh, which is in uh, refraction mode. Refraction means it's like they are far apart. The each atoms here will be far apart. Same goes to this. It's a refraction and it is a refraction. Okay, so since the atoms are actually far apart, so the pressure here will be lower. Okay, so I just uh, put here low pressure. Okay, however, if you look at the another another part of this atom arrangement here, the one that I circled in a green color, this is more to a compression. Okay, in this compression, the atoms are actually uh, is arranged in very close together. Okay, and the pressure here will be high. So here we will have a high pressure. So I hope you can understand this uh, basic uh, concept over here of uh, refraction and also the compression. Now let me answer this, the question. Okay, here is my answer, uh, answer suggestion. For compression, atoms are close together and will be in a high pressure. Uh, however, for the refraction, molecules uh, is further apart from each another and will be in a low in pressure. As long as you have these two points and you can make your own sentences. So you'll be getting a three marks over here. Now let us look at the next question. Okay, now if you notice this, this is uh, some, some calculation. Okay, a musical instrument emits a sound. Emits means uh, they are releasing or produced, okay? A sound with a frequency of 4.4 kilohertz. The speed of sound in air is 340 meter per second. Okay, to calculate the wavelength of a sound. So, we have this uh, V equals to frequency multiplied with lambda. So, this is the, the wave equation we call it. Okay, so we can actually substitute this is uh, 340 and the frequency we just change it to hertz so it means like multiply with 1000 so you got the 4400 and here we will be having uh, lambda lambda is the wavelength so we have to divide this so 340 we divided with the 4400 so lambda here we will be getting let me calculate this 340 divided by 4400 and you'll be getting here 0 0.0.0773 so you can make it like a 0 0.077 meter all right so this, this is your calculation for three marks now let us look at uh, the next question over here Okay, the frequency of the sound emitted by the instrument is changed to 5.1 kilohertz. Okay, if you notice the previous one is 4.4 uh, kilohertz. This is the frequency and then they change it to 5.1 kilohertz. Okay, and then the amplitude of the sound, if you look at here, the amplitude of the sound increases. Okay, now if the amplitude of the sound increases, without calculation state what happened to speed of the sound. So the speed of the sound remains constant. Okay, this one is always remains constant. If it's in, in the air, they remain it as a 330 to 340 meter per second. If in water, it will go about 1500. If in solid, it will go about three to 5,000 the speed. Okay, now when you're looking at the wavelength, okay, now there's a simple concept over here. 
So you're looking at a wasteland. Let me draw like a few graphs uh, here. Okay, now one, two, three, and four. Okay, let us assume that it is about uh, one second and here's about two seconds. So this is what we call it as a as a lambda, one lambda. Okay, one lambda is the wavelength. Now, when you're talking about uh, uh, increasing the frequency, right? Okay, try to imagine when you're increasing the frequency, what happened? Let's say the frequency makes it double. So it's not a really proper graph. So sorry for the drawing size. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Okay, I managed to make it double. Okay, now when I change the frequency, this one is a higher frequency. Okay, here is a higher frequency. So you can notice that the size of the lambda, the the wavelength is getting shorter, right? So when the speed is constant, when the speed is constant according to this formula, so when the frequency is increasing, your lambda should be, uh, I mean the wavelength should be reduced. So you can say the sound, the wavelength of the sound here is a decreases. So these are the explanation uh, for this question. So here's two marks and total is about eight marks over there. Okay, so I hope you're okay with this one. So uh, let us move to the next question. Okay, now for the question number seven, state two uses of uh, infrared radiation. Okay, this question is about uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay, so one of the uses is uh, it's about uh, remote control. If you look at our uh, car remote control or remote gate or remote uh, anything to do with sensors okay so they'll be using a uh, infrared radiation so we can put the answer here as uh, for remote control remote controls and we can also add in and sensors okay so all the sensors and alarms they're using a uh, infrared radiation the another application here that we can think of is a thermal imaging so let me show you what is a thermal imaging. Okay, let me open my Google here. Okay, now the thermal imaging. Okay, it looks like this. Okay, it looks like this. So these are the thermal imaging, the image that uh, appeared from the thermal imaging cameras. Okay, so they will detect the heat uh, from the person and you will have the images like this okay so now we go back to the question okay now we will have a x-ray uh, used in hospitals to help treat patients so suggest and explain the three precaution for the safe use of x-ray okay the first thing here that uh, you can see like uh, one of the precautions right for the safe use of x-ray you can mention that uh, limit limit the usage time okay limit the usage time or you can also say the time of exposure time of exposure okay number two um, you can also like adjust the intensity of this x-ray where you can limit the dosage okay the dosage used dosage or we can also mention it as it as the intensity uh, used okay the third one okay the third one here you can mention so when uh, because uh, you are not going to use the x-ray for the whole body of the patient right so you can actually uh, normally they'll use x-ray for the certain part of the body so the rest of the part we can actually protect it by using a, a shielding method so we can like use a shield okay shielding of the other parts other parts of the of the body 
that is not used for this x-ray. Okay, we look at the next question here. Okay, state the speed uh, in a vacuum of a microwave and x-ray. Okay, please remember that this is a lateral magnetic waves. So, uh, as, a, as a small uh, small explanation about this electromagnet. So let me explain to you. EM stands for electromagnet. Okay, we will have like a seven types of rays. Okay, seven types of rays. So one of it is a radio, and then we will have a micro. So and then the third one is we have a infrared. Okay, infrared. The fourth one is a visible light. Visible light for the photosynthesis how we, uh, you can see me and I can see you and uh, here is the UV light ultraviolet and here is the x-ray and here is the gamma ray so it's a short explanation okay now the radio wave we are using it for the TV and the radio's transmission all right so this is a radio wave they have a they have a longest wavelength okay so they have the longest lambda wavelength micro they are using it for the cellular for your your phone communication okay so i just put there like a cellular communication other than cellular we are also using it for for oven okay to bake cookies okay for infrared i have explained just now is for the sensors visible light for the photosynthesis uh and and how i can see you and you can see others we are using invisible light uv the uv is to to detect the fake notes okay sometimes they are using it for the agriculture purpose okay and then the x-ray is to treat uh, cancer cells to treat uh, cancer cells or uh, they can also detect uh, bones and detect the hidden objects in a uh, in the in the building okay for bones x-ray okay the gamma ray normally they'll be using a gamma ray for to kill cancer cells this is we call as a radiotherapy okay there's another another uh, another medication they're using is a chemotherapy okay so these are the basic of the electromagnetic uh, race and all of their speed is uh, 3.0 times with 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so these are their their speed they are following the speed of light okay now let us go back to the question here okay so now for microwave and uh, x-ray they have a same speed which is this meter per second and same goes to here okay now state the possible frequency of an ultrasound okay our human uh, normal human uh, hearing range is a 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz so ultrasound means it's a something extra so it will be higher than than uh, 20,000 so we can just put state there about 25,000 hertz or anything actually more than a 20,000 hertz is a is a ultrasound okay so the total marks for this question is a uh, eight marks so we can move on with the next question over here okay for the question number eight uh, eight a one figure eight point one shows the electrical circuit the resistor has a resistance of a four ohm the reading on a voltmeter is about three voltage okay over here they are asking to calculate the current in the resistor so here's a positive here's a negative and here the current will be flowing okay it will be flowing and it will pass the diode okay this is a diode the function of diode is to allow current to flow in one direction To flow in only one direction okay so if you look at the diode here this is a 
positive and this is a negative so so they will only will allow the current to flow in this direction if the current is uh, coming from the opposite direction here it will be blocked okay so the current cannot be flowing so here we have a current here is 4 ohm and here is a 3 voltage so we can use this uh, v equals to ir to calculate we have here 3 divided by 4 and we can get the current so the current value is uh, 0 0.75 ampere so this is the two marks question okay so let us move on with the next one okay now 8.2 shows the same circuit with the one component reversed Okay, since here is reversed, okay, you can see that this is reversed. So, when the current comes here, when they attach, it will be blocked. Okay, here will be current will be blocked. The current will be blocked. So, what happened here, uh, we don't have a, uh, we don't have a current supply because it's already blocked. So, the voltage reading will be 0 volt. And your explanation can be um, diode blocked the flow of current. Okay, the flow of current. So it's in a reverse direction. So this is your answer here for number two. Okay, now let us move on with the next one. Okay, for this B, uh, figure 8.3 shows the symbol of a logic gate. So, these are the logic gate. Okay, this one is N. Uh, now, they are asking, state the name of this logic gate. Okay, it's just an N gate over here. Alright, now we move on with the next one. Okay, a student designs the circuit shown in a figure 8.4. So here will be, okay, so if you notice here, the gate here is a NOR gate, which means it's a combination of an OR gate plus with the NOT gate. So we can, in case you forget, we can do it from the very basic, the OR gate. Let's say here's AB, AB and here is the, the normal OR gate, okay, the normal OR gate. So let's see, I just make it here as an X. So here's X. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So all gate means is either one. If either one of the input has 1, and automatically the output, which is the X, will become 1. So you got the 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, now let's say if I put here the NOT gate. Okay, it will become opposite. So it become, let's say I make it here Y. Here's Y. So 1, 0, 0, 0. So it is only will be on when the A, B, the input, both input is 0. So if you look at here, the C and D will share the same, uh, will share the same um, input and output. So here will be 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. Okay. So now look at the E. Okay, E is the same. So not. So if it's a 1, 1. So if it's a 1, 1 over here, it uh, it shows it's 0. Okay, you are getting here 0. And the rest is, they are following the first one. So, which is you are getting here 1. So, here will be 1, 1, 1. Okay. Now, look at this question. The last one for this part. Okay. A single uh, logic gate can be used to produce the output E in the figure 8.4. With the input A and B shown in the table 8.2. State the name of this logic gate. So, here it represents, if you look at this part. You look at this part here okay so here will be the same right so it is representing the object 
So this is R gate. So it's one mark for this, and total for this question is about nine marks. Okay, now let us move on with the next one. Okay, question number nine. Electrical power is produced in power station by alternating current generator. The output of the generator has a voltage of 22,000. The output, yeah, the output is 22,000. The electrical power is transmitted at a voltage of 400,000 voltage. Explain why electrical power is transmitted at a voltage of 400,000 and not 22,000. Okay, let me explain this in a form of picture. So let's say uh, the transmission uh, uh, system will be appearing like uh, when you go to a highway, okay, like uh, you can see like a huge, uh, and you can see like a, sometimes there'll be like four wires, sometimes you have a three wires over here, okay. So normally the voltage over here will be very high voltage. Why high voltage is? When, um, okay, simple explanation here, when there is uh, the current flowing in a in a wire okay you will have a heat dissipated around you will be having a heat dissipated okay when the current flowing you will have a heat dissipated so when the amount of current is uh, large so what happened you will have a uh, so let me write it down when uh, when large current flowing, when large current flowing, there will be a tremendous a heat loss. Okay, so you can say uh, heat heat loss, or oh, you can say heat dissipated uh, to surrounding. Okay, heat loss to surrounding. So how do we calculate the heat loss? We can calculate by using the formula I square. R. Okay, these are the uh, to calculate the heat loss. So, how do we minimize the current? So, we have to increase the voltage because we look at the power. Because the transmission is they have to deliver the power. So, let's say like here we have a, a 100 watt. Okay. So, here we need to get at least the, about 95 watt or 100 watts the best. But normally we don't achieve the the full power okay because it will be uh, there is there is a heat loss around uh, because the copper the the cable here they are using uh, aluminiums okay so uh, the power's formula is a v i so when they increase the voltage when they maximize the voltage so what happened the current they have to use is a very minimum so when you have a minimum amount of current, there will be, you can cut down your heat loss. You can reduce, reduce heat loss. So that's why, that is the reason why for the transmission system, they're using a very high voltage. Okay, so this is, I'm going to uh, put in a words form. Okay, okay, this is my suggested answer here. The first point is, High voltage will result in a lower current. Okay, second one is uh, lower current flowing in a wire will result in a reduced heat loss. Okay, sorry for my writing here. Okay, now your heat loss you can actually calculate by using this formula. Okay, when there is a large heat loss, so what happens is there will be a huge power drop at the output. Okay, so you can use your own words as long as you have these points. Okay, you'll be getting a three marks over here. Now let us look at the next one. Okay, uh, a computer contains a transformer. The input voltage. Okay, let me just draw a transformer here, a simple one. Okay, so it is made from a iron core. This part is made from a soft iron core. So just remember it. Is uh, why they are using a soft iron core is to uh, magnetize and demagnetize the magnetic flux. Okay, it can easily to magnetize and demagnetize. Okay, the input voltage is a 240. Output voltage of the transformer is 20 volt. So it's definitely it's a step down. 
over here okay it's a step down so you can see here we have a lot of coils lot of coils over here and here we have a limited amount of coils okay so here's about 240 voltage and here's about 20 voltage okay now the output current here output current that are flowing here is uh, 2.3 ampere okay the efficiency of the power is about 90 percent now they're asking the input current so i p so now we have to get the the power okay how do we calculate the power from this side okay it's five marks question now we calculate the power here first the power is calculated by vi so which is about 20 voltage multiplied with 2.3 and you are getting here about 46 okay you're getting here about 46 volt okay the formula for the efficiency is a power out over power in multiply with 100 equals to 90 percent so now um the 100 we can move here it become dy so it becomes 0 0.9 and the input power is what we are going to find and the output power we get about 46 so it's about uh, 46 divided by 0 0.9 equals to power input power so your input power will be resulting in uh, 46 divided by 0 0.9 you'll be getting here about 51 watt so to get the current so we can use the same formula as this so p equals to vi and the voltage here will be 240 and the power here will be about 51 so this is the current so 51 divided by 240 we will be getting here about 0 0.21 ampere okay these are the current and this is how do we calculate this Okay, so I, uh, I hope uh, you can understand this part. Uh, so it's a total of about 5 marks only for this calculation question. And total for this question is about 8 marks. Okay, we move on with the next one. Okay, for number 10, uh, figure 10.1 shows the relay. Okay, these are the relay and uh, the switch in the input A is closed. I mean, circuit A is closed. Okay, describe how this operates the motor in circuit B. Okay, so let me make it a bigger a bit. Okay, so now the explanation here will be when you close this switch, so what happened? There will be a current flowing here, right? So when the current flows here, this rod, uh, this soft iron core will become a, like a magnet. So when the current passes through the solenoid, the solenoid here will become a, like a temporary magnet so when this one becomes a magnet so what happens to the, the soft iron armature so it will be attracted so this one remember this uh, this is a pure it's a fixed position so when this one attracted to the magnet all right so this one will move up so you will have a drawing now let me just uh, draw for you the rough picture of this so it become something like here okay you'll be attracted okay you'll be going up Okay, so these are the second position of this uh, soft, uh, soft iron armature. So this will move up. So when they move up, the contact here, it will be uh, in contact. It will be closing the contact. So when they close the contact, what happened? Here there is an AC. So the current will flow through the circuit. And the motor will be an on. So this is how they will operate the motor. When there is a current, they... Uh, open the inner circuit a so they will lose the magnetism over here and the soft iron armature will, will return to the original point 
so the sun will be in an off contact it will be open so here there will be no more operating the motor okay so this is the basic explanation of this diagram now, now let us answer the question okay i have uh, written here my suggested uh, answer okay when the circuit is closed the solenoid solenoid becomes magnet and attract the soft iron armature which then close the contact in circuit b and then current will be flowing in circuit b and operates the motor okay so you can use the your understanding to actually develop your own sentences and make sure you have the all the points okay uh, the points are the solenoid becomes the magnet is the first point you have to remember the first point and it attracts a soft iron core second point and in, uh, third point is you have uh, in contact with this one uh, closing the contact this is in number three and the fourth one current will be flowing and operates the motor these are the four points you have to mention okay now let us look at the next question over here the switch in a circuit a is open and the soft iron armature is replaced with a steel okay steel armature okay now the circuit uh, the switch in a circuit a is closed okay what happens if soft iron uh, if there is a soft iron it's easy for them to uh, to magnetize and demagnetize but if you're looking at a steel it's very hard for them to demagnetize and also magnetize once they become a magnet is a uh, it's quite hard for them to lose the magnetism and they will remain as a magnet. Okay, this one is the characteristics for the permanent magnet. So what happens if you have a permanent magnet here? So, so they will be forever in on position. Okay, explain what happens when the switch in a circuit A is then open. Okay, let me explain to you at this part. So what happened over here is uh, the... Okay, well, once they on this, okay, well, once they on this, they will stick at the second position. Okay, even though uh, here we open it, uh, it will still remain as a second position because it's already becoming a, ma a magnet. So once it become magnet, the soft iron core and the soft uh, iron armature here will be attached together. Okay, so here they'll stick because of uh, because this one becomes a magnet. So let me write it down my suggested answer here. Okay, the steel remains its magnetism even when there is no current in a circuit A. The motor in circuit B will not stop. Okay, this is my suggested answer. So it's uh, two marks over here. Total is five marks for this question. Okay, now let us look at the next one. Okay, number 11. Figure 11.1 uh, shows a beam of uh, alpha particle, beta particle and gamma particle directed between the two metals plate uh, P and Q. Okay, there is a beam of alpha, beta and gamma. Okay, so over here, uh, the metal plates are parallel and there will be a large potential difference between them. So, plate P is a positive and a Q is a negative. Draw the parts of each of the radiation between the plates and after leaving the plates. Okay, label path alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, so for your uh, for your understanding here, alpha is a four to helium and it has a positive charge. Beta is a electron. Okay, it's a zero negative uh, one electron as a negative charge. However, gamma is a neutral. So you can see the gamma here they will be traveling in a in a straight line. This one is a gamma. Okay, alpha is a positive. Okay, alpha is a positive charge. So alpha will be okay. Now I'll be using a red color uh, line for alpha. Alpha is a positive, so it will be attracted to the to the negative. So alpha will be going in this way. Okay, so this is alpha. This one is alpha and uh, the beta, beta I'll be using it in a blue color. So beta will be deflected here. This is beta and you have to be careful at the deflection angle of alpha and beta because alpha is much more heavier. So they have a lesser angle at this part. 
However, if you look at beta, they'll be having a larger angle because they are light. Okay. So this one, uh, they haven't asked a question on the angles of deflection of a beta and alpha. So you can expect the question to be in a, in a coming exams. Okay. So this is the five marks over here. Now, the last one, state and explain one practical application of a gamma ray. So the application here, we can say it's a medical, medical treatment medical treatment so the as explanation here it kills uh, cancer cells okay kills cancer cells okay so this is one of the suggested answer so uh, this is two marks and total question is about seven marks so i think this is the last question for this uh, this paper so if you have uh, any question any doubts or any uh, anything so you just can uh, leave a comment below here and uh, I'll reply to you okay so thank you very much for uh, watching this video please subscribe and like this channel thank you very much guys